Hi everyone, welcome to Mark One Design YouTube channel. It's been a while. Um, today we're doing a unboxing video. Well, basically we're going to unbox this uh, troubleshooting case. I call it EMC troubleshooting case. Uh, this is a uh, petty case where I often travel with uh, either for troubleshooting on site or do some training. So I can put my equipment some and some handy tools inside the box. And today we're going to unveil what is inside the, 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 the box. I should say, I got this idea from uh, Mr. Ken White's book. Um, I, I remember I first read this book in the pandemic. It's called Create Your Own EMC Troubleshooting Kit. It's a trilogy and this is number one. And the idea, as you can see on the cover, is he has exactly the same size of petty case. And here you can see um, how many kits he's got in his uh, little uh, case. And today I'm just gonna show you what I got in my case. So let's have a look. First is a PCB size antenna. It's a log periodic antenna, quite effective from about 80, 90 megahertz all the way to gigahertz range. Um, this is quite useful for troubleshooting to bring with you in a small case like this. Let's start with the big boys, okay? Uh, obviously, as an EMC engineer, the most important tool is a spectrum analyzer. So inside this box, I have a portable uh, spectrum analyzer, which is quite handy. It's battery powered, battery powered from a company called Owen. Uh, as you can see here, uh, I recently purchased this one, so it's quite new. Um, yeah, this one is good because it gives me 9 kilohertz to 3.6 gigahertz range. And it also has a tracking generator. Nice thing about this one is it actually works with my TechBox EMC View software, which obviously now is becoming more popular with more functions. So if I can work a portable spectrum analyzer with the EMC View software, I'll definitely go for it. Um, so yeah, um, uh, performance-wise, quite similar to all my benchtop EMI uh, spectral analyzers sitting there. I've got three or four there. But uh, if I travel, I tend to bring this nice little kit with me. Um, I believe other manufacturers now start looking, um, bring their own uh, models into the market as well. So pay attention to that. Uh, you might actually get a real-time spectrum analyzer as well. Uh, this one is, is only a uh, sweep mode, but it does the job, right? Okay, so that's the spectrum analyzer, uh, first thing here. Okay, first thing is the spectrum analyzer. That's in a frequency domain analysis, but most of the time you also need to check time domain performance. Therefore, a, again, portable oscilloscope is very handy in this case. So in this case, I have a portable battery-powered, again, uh, oscilloscope from a company called Mixic. Uh, this one I got is only has only 100 megahertz bandwidth, but I'm happy with it because, you know, in my bench top, I have a uh, one gigahertz uh, oscilloscope. This one really, if I travel with this one, it's, it's light, it's, it's small. And the most important thing is 100 megahertz is good enough for me to do power and analysis because most of the time, think about it, I use this to connect uh, voltage and current and do some low frequency harmonics analysis or power factor analysis so that's that will do the job right um so again you know my philosophy is don't buy ferrari if you can you know if you're happy with a golf or, or corsa so this is I, I i really like this one um and best is as i said it works well with the kits it provides so in here as you can see um i put everything in a small bag like this but really i need uh, to buy a a little uh, small petty case inside to, to put all the kits come with the uh, oscilloscope. As you can see, it comes with, well, this is an accessory, so you have to buy this current probe, but this one works um, 30 amps, so very good uh, for me. 30 amps is, is lots of current uh, that you can measure, and also comes with a, um, a differential probe, again, differential probe to measure high voltage. Uh, so in this case, it can measure 750 peak uh, voltage. Again, sufficient for me to do some uh, factory uh, low frequency power kind of work. I, I carry these uh, uh, accessories uh, with me with the uh, scope. 
Okay, so these are the two big boys. Next is in, inside, I got this uh, cordless soldering iron, right? Uh, I mean, performance-wise, of course, you, you can't compare this uh, with a Weller or, or anything like that. But again, it's portable, it's battery-powered, it's handy if I need to solder something quickly, like a small capacitor on a PCB or an assistant. So yeah, this, this is pretty good. I bought this actually from uh, Lido, so probably less than 20 pounds, you can get a set um, of this, this one, right? And you can charge it using a USB cable, so that's quite, quite handy. Um, inside, yeah, got a power supply for these two big boys. Uh, yes, next thing is a RF accessory set. So this again comes from TechBox. Um, inside, uh, you've got various um, sizes or you know types of connectors: BNC, SMA, um, N-type. Yeah, quite essential. I always use these, right? The worst thing is when you go somewhere and then you forgot to bring a connector set, then you can't perform performance. That's just the worst thing that could happen. Next is this smart tweezers, right? So it looks like a tweezer, but actually it's like a, a smart LCR meter. So you can use this to measure components such as capacitor, inductance value, and resistance value, right? Like that. Um, this one again, I read it from Ken's book and I bought it, but later he, he come up with another um, better device, but you know, the other device is, is about my multimeter size. So I think size-wise, I'm happy with this device, quite small, you can take it with you. Um, uh, yeah, the, it does have other issues such as, you know, the, the coincident current draw from this device is quite high, so you, you need to charge it quite often. But other than that, I, you know, I use it a few times. I'm, 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 I'm okay with it. Um, Price-wise, I think I paid a 200 or 300 pounds uh, for it. So not cheap, not cheap. Yeah, so depends on what you need. Uh, you can decide whether to have this in your box or not. And next is a tech box transient limiter. Lots of the people who watch our video knows about this device, right? Quite good quality, good hand, handy device that uh, I use to protect my spectral analyzer RF input. Uh, recently, I, again, I learned um, um, a friend of mine basically blew up his RF input when measuring some uh, motor drive performance. So quite essential to put some protector devices at the front end of your spectrum analyzer. Okay, so I always take this with me as well. So that's, again, so we clear this slot. Next is I have a RF current probe, right? And as you can see, I have two probes. And in fact, these two probes, um, uh, what I call matched probes. So basically I asked the company, the manufacturers, to manufacture two almost identical current probes for me. Um, and the idea, again, is in the book or in, on the internet, you can read about it, is that you, if you have two matched, well, a, a pair of matched current probes, you can do a lot of things. You can track immunity issues, you can uh, sort of use it, use them to, to look at the common mode, uh, differential modes, current flow, and lots of things. I will always bring two, uh, in case I, I, you know, occasionally I do need a pair of matched RF current probe. Next is again a small box, again from Tech Box. This is a tiny device like that, and it's it's half a donut of a current probe. And this is what they call surface current probe. Again, I use it quite often because uh, if I work on a, a big uh, instrument and uh, lots of time, I notice there are a lot of uh, surface current, we call it, surface current circulating on the metal plate or inside a cabinet, and I need to measure these uh, surface current, and this small surface current probe is quite handy in that application. Okay, so that's pretty much the big boys, I would say. Let's look at the, uh, their, their uh, little brothers, right? Okay, so what else we got? We got these, some, some of the BN, uh, well, N-type cables to measure. Uh, to, to come with the uh, spectrum analyzer, that's, that's the thing. Next is, okay, I have this one called EMI. Uh, it's, it's a discontinued product, right? 
and it's com coming from a company called Credence Technology. This is a company based in the United States, but I believe now they 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 were acquired by 3M. And uh, but I do really like their product, especially this one, right? A small antenna on top of it, but I use it most of the time to detect ESD event because of the nature of ESD events. It happens intermittently, and discharge of the ESD event happens in nanoseconds or hundreds of picoseconds, so quite fast events. And devices like this can, can be used to trace and track ESD source. So I found it quite useful. Um, it's, it is battery powered as well. So as you can see here, I have a battery here. So uh, yeah, this is my ESD troubleshooting kit here. Next, um, again, yeah, this is a second hand unit actually. Um, it is used to measure static charge, right? Again, most of the time for ESD troubleshooting work. Okay, so it's just a small second-hand devices sitting here. Now, this box is is well. I just use this box, but inside this box, as you can see, is my near field set. So here inside, I have uh, three near field probes from TechBox, co more coaxial cables, and lots of homemade. Uh, probes as well, right? Homemade probes, connectors, all the bits and bobs. So yeah, so this is my tiny little near field probe set. Uh, quite handy. I can play, put everything here in this tiny box. Okay, so the box sits here. Right, so that's two thirds of the equipment. Let's go through the rest. A multimeter, good quality ones is essential, isn't it? Um, I've been using this for more than 10 years time, so still good quality. And actually, I never really replaced the battery, so I'm, I'm quite uh, impressed with um, the multimeter. Uh, next thing is a device called Powerline EMI adapter from a company called Unfilter. Uh, I believe the, co the founder of this company actually is used to work or used to be the owner of Credence Technology, um, if I'm, if I'm uh, correct. Um, I read about this product in Ken Wire's article. I'll put the link in the show notes. Um, yeah, again, this device is useful if you work in high voltage environments and you wanted to measure low frequency conducted emissions because it provides you with high voltage isolation. So that's for safety purposes, but also allows you to measure the low frequency noise quite accurately. Uh, you can connect this either to a oscilloscope or to a spectrum analyzer, and it gives you good readings. I use this for low frequency uh, conducting emission troubleshooting, and I also use it for low frequency ground loop detection. Quite useful, quite useful. Okay, next, of course, is every EMC engineer's uh, best friend, copper tape. No need to talk about that. This device, again, is a what we call chattering relay. It's a homemade chattering relay. Um, yes, yeah, very simple to make it, and it serves as a broadband immunity source. So I power it up, creates broadband noise issues, and I use it for immunity troubleshooting. Okay, again, I can uh, put the uh, link in the show notes. So that's for immunity troubleshooting, broadband immunity troubleshooting. Here, the rest are really just more copper tape and captain tape. Uh, it's worth mentioning that I also have some uh, um, good quality short braided um, ground wires because lots of the time I've, I've seen issues with long green and yellow wire grounding. So yeah, the, these types of grounding I often use for troubleshooting purposes as well. Okay, just some short ground leads. What else have we got? We got a small uh, comm generator from TechBox. So this is for radiated uh, emissions check. I use it if I go to a uh, third party lab or if I do some in situ EMI uh, testing, I often check the antenna uh, using this uh, comb generator. Again, price wise, very cheap. I think under 100 US dollars, you can get one of these. So. Yeah, I always check with this um, comb generator. And what else? Yeah, this box here inside, I have something from Wind, uh, is it Wind Tech or Wind Trek Technology? I can't remember the, 
the, the company name. But again, this is a product introduced in Ken Wyatt's book. It's a small RF amplifier and it can produce uh, RF signals up to, I, don't, I can't remember, two or three gigahertz. And the idea is you connect this to your laptop and the other end, the outputs, you connect it to a near field probe and then you can troubleshooting a PCB if the PCB suffers from certain immunity issue. But I have to say, I think the power, output power, is actually quite small compared to, to most of the other RF um, generators. But size-wise, for this size, it's okay. Um, but I find it's much more useful if, if you can make it uh, maybe a more powerful amplifier, but slightly bigger. So that's, that's some feedback for, for, for this kind of device. Actually, I found it uh, less useful, let's say, compared to, to uh, more powerful RF amplifiers. But I do, do carry this with me since it's quite small. Price-wise, I think it's, again, a few hundred US dollars, so still quite affordable. Um, yeah, and I have a portable walkie-talkie. Now I realize this one is actually not powerful enough as well. I've seen uh, a client of mine using a better or more powerful walkie-talkie, and we can use that walkie-talkie to reproduce some of the radiated immunity failures they face. So time for me to upgrade this to a more powerful uh, walkie-talkie. So yeah, that's my uh, next task in my list to do list. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty much everything inside this area, the main main box area. Now let's go through uh, some of these, right? Um, I always carry a, another box, as you can see from the back, lots of uh, ceramic capacitors, uh, disc capacitors. So these are Y or X type um, capacitors used for high voltage application, quite useful for you know, containing the common mode noise. So I often carry a, a small box set with different values of uh, the disc, ceramic disc capacitors. Um, here in this area, all these are um, connectors, uh, attenuators, uh, 50 ohm terminators, or all, all the RF bits, right? All opening here, as you can see. Um, it's quite handy, like you have, again, different types of connectors and and attenuators. So yeah, um, sometimes I do need to attenuate the noise since the noise is quite big, um, all the attenuators in this bit. Here, as you can see, ferrite. Um, you know, you always need to carry some ferrite and I often think, I often find 31 material from ferrite, this size is actually the most popular one or most useful one in my opinion, because yeah, you, you just can use it for so many applications. So I often carry you know, different sizes of ferrite cores, but I found this size and this material is the best combination. And as you can see, not only do we have some ferrite components in this little pocket, I also have um, ceramic capacitors, small, tiny, surface-mounted ceramic capacitors, obviously for obvious use. Um, the value I carry normally, 100 nanofarad, 10 nanofarad, 1 nanofarad, you know, the usual uh, good uh, values, let's say. And in terms of size, uh, you know, we can't really solder 0402 um, in, in, in most of the cases if we travel. So I, I tend to bring at least 0603, 0805. Or oh, actually, I can solder 0402, it just takes more time. So, but I think 0603, 0804, or even 1210 are good size capacities to take you, take, take with you. Um, yeah, and again, more, more RF components, attenuators, high-pass filters. Um, down here, I have calculator, of course, different size of antennas, rod antennas, so these can be used for both measuring the noise or generate noise. If you've got an RF amplifier connecting to it, I found it's quite useful to generate uh, radiated immunity noise. And, uh, and this back, this back, basically has lots of uh, batteries, you know, for powering all these um, kits. And um, what else? Some more accessories to go with the devices. And I guess last thing is this um, DIY shield from Worth Electronics. So as you can see, you know, you can make your own onboard shield uh, out of these materials. Yeah, so. I've used it quite a few times now. 
So I carry these uh, shield with me as well. So yeah, that's re that's really that's it. So that's an overview of this um, EMI troubleshooting case. Um, as I said, you can always design your own sort of combination because this is only a very small portion of my EMI troubleshooting kits and uh, depends on the job you know if it's a immunity failures I know it's a immunity failures I can you know get half of, get rid of half of the uh, equipment and put a more powerful RF amplifier inside that would uh, also do the job so again um, depends on applications but for general troubleshooting purposes I find this kit has pretty much everything you need uh, if you work as a EMC engineer or you work as a hardware engineer want to solve problems. So as I said, very broad general overview. We can't talk uh, um, about the equipment in detail, but hopefully this gives you a taste of the lifestyle of a self-employed EMI or EMC consultant. Um, and I hope all the equipments we discussed here uh, are useful information to you. So yeah, feel free to to, to ask questions or comment. And thank you for watching this video. See you next time.